Hey everyone, as I was building out our DFI journey lesson plan, I realized that I made one really big assumption, and that's that all of you are on this journey with me. Perhaps you're new into cybersecurity and thought, let me see what this is about. Or you thought, hey, Elle makes some really cool content videos. I'm gonna go check out what she's doing. And maybe you are on this journey. Regardless of what situation you're in, I think you should stay tuned for this video because not only are we going to cover what DFIR is, we're also gonna dig into the key questions that you'll be looking to answer as part of a DFIR team. Now, I'm gonna make a quick note, and that's the fact that yes, I say DFIR, and other people have told me, no, it's deeper, but doesn't matter. What matters is your ability and curiosity to dig in and start trying to find out what's happening. To better understand it though, let's go and break it down to the two parts. DF, digital forensics. The best way I can explain this to you is to think about it just like a regular forensics team. There's a crime, let's say it's a murder, and your police force, your FBI arrives with their forensics teams and they start looking to see what happened. You know, can they solve this murder because the murder weapon is laying right there and they can get fingerprints? Or perhaps this victim, they fought back and they now have the, uh, the attacker's DNA under their fingers. Well, you're doing similar things, but you're doing it in a digital space. You're looking for that evidence. Oftentimes you're going to be looking at files, things that contain data. And you're looking at metadata within that. You know what? This timestamp of the creation of this file is shortly before the attack began. Or you're looking at it and saying, this is supposed to be a Word file. Why is it five gigs in space? It's all of these little clues that can lead you to finding out what occurred during the attack and who the attacker was. The next part of that is we have IR. We have incident response. The way I like to describe this is the wolf is in the hen house and it's time for you to go hunting, threat hunting. Quick note on this though, is that's not always the case because sometimes you'll be facing something like a DDoS and that's really about preventing and stopping that attacker from bringing down your systems. You're not really focused on tracking down the attacker at that time. I know that this was such a high level overview. Like I just skimmed the surface and I'd love to have the time to go into incident response preparation here, but this isn't the video for that. So if you'd like to see that video or you have questions on this, you know, comment below. I'll be around to answer it. I've got amazing DFIR friends who will come in and answer, or perhaps we'll make another video. But the key part I wanted to get to in this are the questions that you're going to be looking to answer as part of that team. The first question you need to answer is, are you actually under attack? Or perhaps your company contracted out to a third party that has permission to be within your system and looking at that data, but as it goes, they didn't document that information never got to you. And if you are facing a real attack, then what type of attack are you facing? Is this a ransomware attack where you need to start pulling systems off and offline as soon as possible? Or are you looking at what seems to be a very targeted attack that is looking specifically at certain systems or to access certain systems? This is going to go into what is the intent of the attacker. If you see them you know, really focusing on servers that contain your proprietary information, this is going to give you a hint on what you should be focusing on and what you should be isolating. And you know, is this related to a previous incident? start looking at it and you're going, wait a minute, I've seen something very similar. You know, this probably is tied to this previous alert. Perhaps that previous incident was actually just their first wave, their recon. Hey, let's find out where that proprietary information is. Where can we get in the system? How are they gonna respond to this type of threat? Remember, attackers, they really, they might even be in the industry. They understand what it is that we're doing. So they're looking to be able to respond in the same way that you're looking to be able to respond to their attack. From there, you're going to be looking at what machines were infected. Sometimes we kind of lay, you know, I don't want to say on our morals, that's not correct. We, we lay down our defenses, you know, personally, because we think, you know, what, they came in to a network that we have isolated, right? It's completely on its VLAN. Finance can't really find any other information or get into other systems. But the attackers, they're going to break out of that. That is one of their goals. So we can't just say those are the machines that we're looking at. We need to look down into our entire network because 
Just because one box didn't react, didn't have action come out of it, doesn't mean the attacker didn't get into it, lay down their files, and are now establishing persistence there so they can come back once we believe the attack to be over. And finally, how do we contain and remediate this threat? If it's something that we're not really seeing bringing down the system, we're not seeing cause uh, immediate damage, perhaps we're just going to isolate those machines. We're going to try to see what the attacker is doing by watching them. Or, you know what? Yeah, this is a huge ransomware attack. I need to bring down my systems. If it's cloud servers, I need to start deleting them. Hopefully by going through all of this, you have a little bit more insight on what your DFI journey is going to look like. As I said, please comment below if you want any clarity, any further information, maybe some other videos. And our favorite part, please like this video if you enjoyed what you're getting so my management knows that you know what, you're enjoying this. And of course, subscribe so you can get updates on further videos because the next one is going to be all about what skills you're gonna need in order to be successful in DFIR.